good week to you all. Um, I didn't put a, I don't know, I want to call it a video out, I suppose, or lesson for this yet. A few of you have already handed it in, which is fine uh, for this week three essay or lesson three essay about narrative. And a couple of you even had written somewhat of a narrative last week, and I threw out an idea to you. But for the rest of you, you uh, did a descriptive essay, and maybe you're even considering writing a story that took place in that area. I don't uh, have a requirement for that, but it'd be easier for me if I knew, oh, wow, I've already read this, and I can jump in there. But what if it's a new place? What do, you, what do we do? And even if it is uh, something you've already described, assume I haven't read it before. And how do you set up a way for people to catch up with your mind? And hopefully the notes that I'm leaving on your mm -hmm. essays, if you didn't know that I'm leaving notes on your essays, please check there. I try to do, uh, you can click on view feedback and, uh, and then you can also see a side comment, but I try to give you lots of feedback there. Um, and most of what I put in there is either this is really good showing or you, you need to say it like this or, or try something like this. It's got to be your voice, mm -hmm. not me. I don't, stop texting me. Um, but I need you to do the same thing that we just learned about descriptive writing and incorporate it into a story. Remember, this has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's um, not just describing something that happened to you um, without creating some setting and characters. That's why I wanted to look at this. This is part of the story that I wrote about my grandma. And this is part of the flashback. I tried to put a mark here to show that it goes back in time. Uh, and that really it's two stories, a story of my grandma in 1943, and then a year before in 1942, when she had skipped the mixer and had gone off with her friends. And here's how I set it up, that they were gonna go to the Cunningham waterfall on the north side of town. And it's not as glamorous as it sounds. Elwood Reservoir is a 20 minute walk if you act like Cemetery Road doesn't dead end on Highway 283. So, my I know where my grandpa is buried. Like she would have walked past the graveyard that my grandpa is now buried at. By the way, that's him that knocks the cigarette out of her hand. And they were born in the same house on the same day in 1929. They ended up buying that land and living in this small town in South Central Nebraska. That's why this book is called The Doctor's Office. And they he really did introduce himself and from day one won her heart. It's a beautiful story, fun story. But this cemetery road, which comes into play later in the book, she walks by it. It's a little bit of foreshadowing. It's a tough story to tell. A little bit of foreshadowing here. And it dead ends. If you were to walk on it going north, northwest, you'd cross Highway 283. You could find it on Google Maps and walk across, cut through this field, and you get to this little ditch. And it's not far from Elwood Reservoir. I'm trying to give you the setting, right? Every story has setting. You've got to set the stage of where you're at. The corn stalks were usually tall enough to hide our trespassing, though they would scold us with their chlorophyll razors. Now I could tell you we cut through a cornfield and got to a ditch. I want to show you. Corn stalks, they're tall, so it's late in the summer. They hide trespassing. We know we're doing something we're not supposed to do. And they'd scold us with chlorophyll razors. They're sharp. If you've ever detasseled corn, you wear long sleeves or those things will rip you apart. The lack of wind motivated our troops. So there's a bunch of us to the Eden on the other side, some sort of oasis, some sort of paradise. But it actually meant a cotton grove ditch where the field would drain its excess. A small creek would form on rainy days, leading us to Cunningham Waterfall. Most days, it was just a trickle oozing out of the mud. The cliff, as we saw it, was 50 feet tall. 
in reality, it was more like 12. Still a good drop off for a plunge and a dip. Later that evening, a storm rumbled up over us while we were playing wet hooky. I misspelled hooky there, it should be with a Y. I give a sentence here that tells you what we're doing. We're going swimming until a storm comes up. Now it's a foreshadowing that the storm is bigger than we thought. It's gonna be a tragic story, right? Um, I'm letting you know that it's these girls. Now I had spent some time up here showing you these girls using dialogue. And um, I wanted to show you the one thing that I'm also asking you to do, and that is incorporate some dialogue into this story that you're telling. Some of you already turned it in and I'll work with you. Um, I didn't want you to, to turn it in that fast, but here's me trying to build this character of my grandma where she, and I want you to notice these dialogue tags, like yelped, puffed, whispered, and laughed. You're seeing uh, my grandma get passed by Carla, cuss under her breath, get muddy, and her, her best friend trying to laugh it off and understanding. And you see my grandma tell a little bit about just a quick glimpse into how she's really feeling. Ever since grandpa moved in, I haven't been much of a priority, I'm kind of like a shadow. Your parents care about you. I know sometimes I just want them to notice. Now I'm trying to set up a novel here where she's gonna leave these friends. You're not gonna see these friends as much throughout the rest of the book. She's gonna cleave and leave for my grandpa named Dale. Why? Well, she's it. the closest person she cares about is Donna right now, and her parents don't seem to be noticing her. How do I establish that? I, I've got to use dialogue, and it sometimes tells us more than, or it shows us more than what we tell, all right? And it's more interesting and more fun. Also, notice, because it's just the two of us, I don't have any dialogue stems or dialogue tags here. It's just back and forth. It's context that tells us. Finally, every time somebody new talks, you have to hit enter. You have to hit enter. It's a new paragraph every time. And you really should notice that I use these as examples. I'll be looking for this on the grammar, that you're putting periods in the right place, putting the quotation mark in the right place. I'm gonna be looking for that. And if you don't have any dialogue, it's gonna hurt your grade. So put dialogue into your story, just at least five lines. And uh, I hope it helps you continue to grow uh, at, as a writer, that this is a writing class. And it, I hope it's fun to try and uh, delve into these things and don't get annoyed by my comments. And if they're too cheesy, I'm sorry. Or if they seem harsh, I definitely don't want that to be the point. And if you have any questions, please email me or you have my cell, you can text me. Um, thanks for being around. Uh-oh, oh, sorry. You got to see my face at the end instead of hit. And have a good day.